education in the region of Sjuhärad. So this is the third time that we're doing this, but in two ways, at least, this is the first time for all of us. Because as you've also recognized by now, if you didn't see it in the program, is that we're doing this in English. And the reason why we're doing this is that this year, uh, the Days of Knowledge are part of our International Week at the university. And the International Week obviously goes on for a week, uh, and it includes all kinds of events that celebrates and promotes the university's activities, activities that in different ways further internationalization. And internationalization is something that is increasingly integrated into all our education and research. And we feel that it's very important that we celebrate this development because we think it furthers the aim of the University of Bors as a whole. So doing this is in English is one way in which it's the first time for all of us. And the, the second way is that for the first time, the days of knowledge include also the award, the Social Media Prize. And the Social Media Prize is a grant in the amount of 100,000 Swedish crowns that is financed by Sparbank Stiftelsen Sjuhärad and awarded by Borås City and the University of Borås. The prize is given to a person or people who have made significant achievements in social media from a social development perspective. This year, the prize goes to Wikimedia Sverige. The non-profit Wikimedia Sverige has, for many years, worked to make information available online, mainly on Wikipedia, one of the world's largest free knowledge sources. Wikimedia Sverige conducts a variety of pro projects, including helping instructors and librarians to use Wikipedia. Wikimedia Sverige also supports archives and museums to make their material available. Hundreds of volunteers contribute to Wikimedia Sverige's work in a variety of ways. The official part, the, the, the official prize award, sorry, will be at tonight's dinner, but but now we have the pleasure of listening to a short presentation by Anna Trubay, Head of Operations at Wikimedia Sverige. Anna, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting us be here today and thank you very much for the award. Um, I hear it's very fashionable this year not to acknowledge that you get a great award we are not like that. We are ridiculously happy to achieve this great honor. Um, also, the only prize I ever had the chance to, to come and accept before was an award for shot put when I was 11. So this is a great moment for me and for my organization. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the social media revolution of knowledge. That's a lot of great words in one sentence, but I'm going to explain them a little bit further. First of all, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room. What is Wikipedia and what is Wikimedia? And are they the same or are they not at all the same? Everybody wants to ask that and we try to answer as best as we can. Uh, I usually say that it's a little bit like the eternal question, who is Bjorn and who is Benny? They kind of look the same, but you know. Um, Wikipedia is the world's greatest and biggest, and actually also the historically biggest and greatest encyclopedia. Wikimedia is the organization that supports Wikipedia. So Wikimedia Foundation in America are the ones that maintain the servers and make sure that the encyclopedia is up and running. But all the content on Wikipedia is completely edited and administered by the community around Wikipedia. And that could be anybody. It could be a few of you here. And if you're not already part of that community, anybody here can become part of that community. And Wikimedia Sweden, we are a local chapter of Wikimedia Foundation. We're our own organization, but we are still a part of that group. And we work with a Swedish language version of Wikipedia, which is uh, actually quite big 
considering that Swedish is quite a small language, the Swedish Wikipedia language version is still uh, quite big compared to many others. So you could say that our goal as an organization is to work for free knowledge. We believe that anybody that has access to free knowledge has access to a better life, more open doors, more opportunities. And this is true for everybody, whether you live in Sweden or you live in Bangladesh or you live in India or you live in America or wherever you live. If you have knowledge, you can take steps to further your life in a great many different ways. And our main tool as an organization is, of course, Wikipedia, because it is a wonderful platform for knowledge. But we also have many other platforms that we work with. We work with Wikimedia Commons, for instance. And if you don't know what that is, um, you probably do without knowing it, really. Because if you have been into Wikipedia and you see a picture there, that picture is stored on Wikimedia Commons. It's the file database that is used by Wikipedia, but a, a lot of other organizations and platforms and people all around the world. We also work a lot with Wikidata, which is a place where you can uh, collect uh, different kinds of met metadata that is then feeded into Wikipedia and other places. Because that is our main idea, that all the information that we gather should all always be free and made accessible to as many people in the world as possible because knowledge is there to be shared. So I'm going to let you imagine a little bit. Imagine that you sat here 15 years ago and I told you that I have this great idea. I'm going to have this web page and anybody in the world without even logging in will have the opportunity to change everything on the web page they can delete what other people have done, they can add their own things, they can add pictures, they can add links. Anybody, in a constant change, in a constant flux. And we will have this great encyclopedia, the best thing that we have ever seen. What would you think then? What would you think of me if I had told you that 15 years ago? I tried this with my mother, and she said, well, I think, I would have thought it would have looked something like your room did when you were 14. It would have been a complete mess all the time. However, when a lot of people gather around a great idea and with a expressed will to do good and to help other people, good things happen. And as it goes along, you also see that you can actually trust people. People are, in general, much better than we think. You know, it's, it's fashionable today to uh, look at the people next to you and go like, mm, I probably can't trust them. But that is silly, and uh, Wikipedia is one wonderful example of that. You can put trust in strangers, and you will have a wonderful thing coming out of it. A wonderful thing that I like to call big magic, because it is big magic. I have a lot of numbers, I had to write them down because it's big numbers. The, and this is the result of what happens when good people come together to do good things for other people on a platform online. In 15 years, 40 million articles have been created. In 15 years, 300 different language versions of Wikipedia has popped up. Half a billion visitors come to Wikipedia worldwide every month. 70,000 people around the world add or take away or edit or put up pictures or whatever on Wikipedia every month. 70,000 people take time out of their every day just because they want to add something to the world, just because they want to help people. And if we take the Swedish numbers, Swedish Wikipedia has about 3 million page views every day. About 3,000 people do something on Wikipedia every month, as in editing or adding or taking away, taking or, you know, adding to the great wealth that is Wikipedia. 
800 people do quite a bit on Wikipedia every month. And about 100 are hardcore Wikipedians that do a huge amount of the work, which includes writing, editing what other people have written, also making sure that the platform is developed. What tools do we want to implement on Swedish Wikipedia? Uh, how do we work to get more people to learn how to use it, not only as an encyclopedia, but a place where you can add your knowledge? All of this work, all of the many, many countless hours that it has taken to create 40 million articles and 300 language versions of Wikipedia, is done non-profit by people who do it on, in their spare time. It is impossible to put any kind of monetary value on that because it's so much work and therefore it's so wonderful to be able to accept a price like this as a, you know, to, to give all these volunteers, you know, a little bit of credit for what, what they do. Uh, I also like to talk about all the volunteers because they are often forgotten. Because when you, like me, watch TV and wonder how old an actor is and you check Wikipedia on your phone, you don't think so much about the person that added the information about the age of that actor. If you want to check what year Rembrandt painted a picture or if you want to uh, check how many people that live in Borås or whatever it can be, Maybe you don't think about these people that have spent hours making sure that the information gets there and the other people who make sure that the information is correct. So this is a great opportunity to give a little bit of credit to these people. And under the hood of Wikipedia, if you lift it up, um, that's where the social part is because this is a social media award. Um, and actually when we got the award we were like, oh, but we haven't ta been taking care of our Twitter feed so well and maybe we should do more on Facebook. And then we realized what I think the jury realized, that Wikipedia is also a social media platform in a sense. Because if you l lift the hood of Wikipedia, if you see beyond only the articles that you read, there is such a huge social activity going on. All of these people that I've been talking to you about and all the 70,000 people around the world, they meet under the hood of Wikipedia and they discuss how do we best express this in the article. Should we split this article in two maybe because it's becoming a little bit too long? Should we change the image here? Um, should we maybe rethink images overall on Wikipedia? Do we really want the images to be the kind of images that they are now? Um, do we want to do something more? All of this is going on under the hood of Wikipedia, and you don't really see it. You can see it if you click the, the discussion page that all Wikipedia articles have. Um, there is a little tab that says discussion, and if you click there, you can see all the discussions that have created that particular article. And most articles have these discussions, because even the smallest articles about the smallest of things can create a discussion, can create this social interaction between people that might be sitting on completely different ends of the world, but they have one thing in common, and that is that they want to spread their knowledge to other people. And I would like to highlight a few of those volunteers and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and what they do and how they add to the encyclopedia that you use every day. This here is Albin. He is uh, by day an actor and by night, I almost said not all, always by night, but in his spare time he takes pictures for Wikipedia, pictures that he uploads onto Wikimedia Commons. He has taken thousands and thousands of pictures. Um, he is mostly known in Wikipedia, in the Wikipedia context, because he has taken many thousands of pictures from the, the previous year's Eurovision. So if you go onto Wikipedia and you find pictures from, I think, the three latest Eurovisions, you will find a lot of pictures. If you click into Wikimedia Commons, you will find thousands of Albin's pictures. They've been used 
in traditional media all around the world. Uh, the last time I talked to him, he was happy he had found an article in an online magazine from, I think it was Taiwan. And he was like, they had my picture. And that is possible because he wants to do this. The Eurovision people were happy to invite him as, a part, as, as they would invite any other member of the press. It's possible because he publishes his picture under a Creative Commons license, which makes it possible for anybody to use it. This paper in Taiwan could use it. They didn't have to contact him. They found a great picture, they were happy to publish it, and they put his name on it. So that's one really good example of what one person can do. Here's a few others. Magnus up in the corner, he also takes pictures and he writes a lot for Wikipedia. He helps us out in the office with everything. He helps us to educate new Wikipedians. He even helped us assemble our office furniture because we didn't have the time to do that and he was happy to come and help us do that. Bengt in the middle, he is on our board. He also writes a lot. This time he was at an arts and feminism writing workshop that was hosted by a museum in Stockholm. Jonathan on the side here, he is one of our really young volunteers. He is 18. He started quite a few years ago, so he's been an active Wikipedian for a long time. This picture is taken in Italy, uh, where there was a big Wikipedia and Wikimedia conference uh, that he went to to meet other Wikipedians from all over the world. He helps a lot when we have those writing workshops. He comes and helps us educate new and interested Wikipedians. He uploads pictures to Wikimedia Commons. He has helped us with a couple of projects where we have been doing that. This smiling group over here uh, is a group from um, the other Wikimedia people, is Lennart and Sophie. They are in Gothenburg. This summer, they arranged a Wikipedia camp for women because we have too few women on Wikipedia. We have too few articles about women on Wikipedia. We have too few women writing on Wikipedia. And you can complain about that or you can do something. And Leonard and Sophie called our office and said, you know what, we have this idea. We want to create a camp for, so we can teach women to write on Wikipedia. And they had all sorts of great plans and we said, of course, because that's one of the many things we do as an organization. We try to support all the, all the ideas that come from the community. If they want to do something, it could be a wiki camp or it could be a wiki workshop or a wiki coffee. Anything that makes people meet, discuss wiki things and add to our common knowledge database, we are happy to support. And that was one, one of those things. And several of these ladies here have continued to writing on Wikipedia and they are very involved and they want to do more. And if Lennart and Sophie gets their way, which I can say that they will, um, they will have two camps like this next year. And this is only because individuals decide that we want to add to this, we want to be a part of this, and we want you to be a part of it as well. So let's do this. And we make it happen. And this, I said that the picture of Jonathan was taken in Italy. This is Esino Lario. It's a very small village in Italy. It has 600 inhabitants. Apart from one week this year, when they were suddenly flooded with a thousand Wikipedians from all over the world, I think there was over 40 nationalities. And all of these people here are just like the, the ones I just showed you. All of these people do the same things, but in their countries, and quite a few of them in, in Sweden, because there was quite a large number of Swedish Wikipedians there. Um, I talked to one girl from Egypt. She was 22 years old, and I asked, now, is this your first Wikimania? And she was like, no, 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 I've been to many. I, I have convinced two universities in my home countries that they should let their graduate students add to Wikipedia as part of their courses. She was 22 and she has managed to persuade two universities to change the way they work so they could add more information that anybody in the world could access. 
I think that's pretty amazing. I don't think I would have done that when I was 22. And all of, there's just as many stories as there are people in this picture. So the next time you are at a Ikea or in front of the TV and you check something on Wikipedia, these are the people that made it possible. These are the people that help you know how old Brad Pitt is or whatever it is you want to check. But there is another layer to this. As I said in my first example, when I wanted you to imagine if I had suggested a thing, an impossible thing like Wikipedia 15 years ago, there, there is, of course, a certain resistance. It takes time before something kind of grows and gets accepted and trusted, because trust is a big, important thing when it comes to information. And we, in Wik for Wikimedia Sweden, we have been working for many years trying to gain that trust from universities, from institutions, schools, libraries, museums. And in the beginning, it was something of an uphill battle. But there are so many in individuals in these organizations that are very curious, and they want to try new things. And they have information that they want to share. So through this, these first careful contacts, we managed to find these people, and we started to build from that. And today, we have a lot of projects together with, well, as I said, libraries, museums, schools, universities, all sorts of places want to work with us because they have information that they want, want to get out there, and we can help them do that. And here are a few examples. Uh, the planes, for instance, are pictures from uh, the Air Force Museum in Linköping. The picture of Queen Christina in the corner is from National Museum. And National Museum just recently, just a couple, like last week, uh, released another 3,000 pictures free on Wikimedia Commons with our help. And there are many museums in the world that do this. British Museum does it, Rijks Museum in Amsterdam does it. It is happening everywhere. We have this picture in the corner. Those are the first tourists on top of a mountain in Sweden somewhere. And it's a picture from the Nordic Museum's collections. It's one of the many pictures that they have released. We have wiki workshops once a month in Stockholm in cooperation with Stadsbiblioteket. We have cooperations with schools, where we have students uh, writing uh, in their home language on those language versions. We have uh, this wonderful weapon up there. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually a pistol axe. So it's both a pistol and an axe, what we all need in our everyday life. Um, that comes from uh, the collections at School Cluster. They have also released a huge amount of information and pictures and metadata to us. Uh, and the picture up in the corner is from a project we did together with the Jenes Fotografen, Thomas Gunnarsson. Um, because there are some problems on Wikipedia, even if it is absolutely fantastic, that sometimes the pictures can be a little bit sexist, they need, are a little bit too sexualized when they don't need to be, and all those things. And we thought like, okay, how do we approach this? Number one, we needed knowledge. So we contacted Thomas because he has that knowledge. And we started a project where we said, okay, fine, we'll create pictures. We create better pictures because we realized that if you want to illustrate an article about legs or hands or something, it's actually very hard to make good choices because if you want to have a picture of a hand, it will always be the pictures you'll find will always be the picture of a white man's hand. It will probably not be a woman's hand. It will most likely not be from someone colored. If you want pictures of a leg, it will probably be a white man's leg or a woman's leg in a high-heeled shoe or something, which is also like, yeah, well, that's not really just an anatomical picture. So together with Thomas, we created a collection of pictures that were not like that. We created a collection of pictures that was outside the norm, and we wanted to give that to the community so they, to make it easier for them to make good choices and make Wikipedia better that way. 
we also had uh, trans people taking part of this because they are also quite badly rep represented um, and we wanted to create good pictures that could be used uh, for very many different kinds of groups. We also had a, like a woman who's in a wheelchair and stuff like that because you, we need more free accessible pictures to use. And of course we work with many, many more things, but those are a few of the things that we do. We also work with Wikispeech, which is a speech synthesis to make uh, Wikipedia accessible for people that can't read for one reason or another. They will be able to have a Wikipedia spoken to them. Um, we are working with Open Connected Heritage, which is a project to save, um, or at least save in some form, uh, threatened cultural heritage around the world because cultural heritage is very threatened. It can be threatened by war, like in Syria, for instance. It can be threatened by environmental issues or just time. Things don't last. Um, but if you take pictures of them, if you save information, at least you have something left of them. Uh, and we're in the middle of that project, but we started with about 2,000 pictures from old pictures from Palmyra. And those are all things that basically do not exist anymore. Um, but they are there in pictures and anybody can see them on Wikimedia Commons and Wikipedia. So I've already touched a little bit on, I've told a lot about how good Wikipedia is and I've touched a little bit on the things where we need to be better. But as you can see in 15 years, we have managed to hopefully make the word a little bit better we have hopefully opened many new doors for people that maybe did not have that many open doors before. And we are very happy about that and we will of course continue to do that, but we also have to address certain challenges that we have. And I think mainly we have two challenges that we need to approach now um, to maintain trust and to continue to be a relevant part in, of the world. Um, and it is we need to think about the whole word, because if you look at the people that are writing on Wikipedia today, there is a, the, the by far largest group come from the Western world. And we want to bring in people from all countries in the world. And, th and there are, of course, people in all countries, but we want to have many, many, many more. Because there is so much knowledge out there that we need to have, and that we all should share. Um, so we in Wikimedia Sverige and also in other local Wikimedia chapters and from the Wikimedia Foundation, we work a lot with trying to support uh, people who want to work with Wikipedia all around the world. And we will continue to do that because that is important because the, we are writing history on Wikipedia. We are telling the story of our time for future generations. And it shouldn't only be a certain kind of people's history of our time we want to have a lot of different voices. We want to have a lot of different perspectives so we can pass on a much more full, uh, full view of our lives and, and, and our time. And the same goes for women. Today, um, there is about 10% of the editors on Wikipedia are women. It's a little bit hard to say that number very definitive because some people don't uh, indicate what, what gender they are. Um, but to the best of our knowledge, it is about 10%. And that is very little. We need more women to write. And um, we work a lot with that. We work with our wiki workshops. We work with uh, the institutions that we work with. They are also very interested in, in this because they usually have the same problem. I mean. We want to be an equal society, but we are really not. Um, so they have the same problem. So by working together, we can bit by bit try to make it a little bit better. Um, and I think these two challenges we need to address, and we are addressing them now, but we want to do it even more. Uh, and in doing so, we will make Wikipedia even better. Um, I have been given my, my little signal here that I should quit in a couple of minutes. Uh, but I would like to ask all of you to spend five minutes 
in the coming week or, or so, or during the weekend. And have a look at Wikipedia and click on all those tabs that you normally don't click on. Click on the discussion page. Click on create an account even. It might look a little bit hard in the beginning, but it actually isn't. There are very many Wikipedians there that will help you. And if you do the wrong thing, it's Wikipedia, you can change it. The worst thing that can happen is that someone gets a little bit annoyed with you and goes like, oh, but you should have known that. But then you tell them, no, I'm new and you have, please help me. And they will. Because all of these people that I've been showing you here in the pictures and many, many, many more are just sitting there waiting for people just like you to come and join them in, sp and in spreading this knowledge revolution around the world because it changes people's life. And when I started editing, I realized that it doesn't only change people's life, as in everybody else's life, it actually changes your own life. You get a completely new view on things. You get a new view on sharing and you get a new view and interest, I would say, in the world. Because everything is suddenly much more interesting when you are faced with something and you go like, oh, can I write something about this on Wikipedia? It adds a different level to things. So try that for five minutes or contact us and we can see if we can help you and your organization in any way. And you will make life a little bit better for someone else. And in the process, you will hopefully make your own life even better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. I, I think you highlighted the theme of the Days of Knowledge very nicely in several ways. I actually thought towards the end that you were going to quote our Nobel Prize winner, Bob Dylan. The times are, they are changing, right? They are. Yeah. But I think what you also described is that we have several similarities. Wikimedia, mm. Wikipedia and universities. Absolutely. Because you, when you described your main challenges, mm. I could recognize all of them. Mm. Uh, we have to become, you already are, but you have to maintain to be still internationally truly relevant. We have to increase our efforts there as a university, I think. Mm. Uh, you also described that we have to maintain a level of trust. Yes. And I think this is also very important for, for mm. universities. Mm. And n not least, we have to increase the amount of women who are active in uh, universities as well. Yes. So even though we have different ways of producing and promoting mm -hmm. and disseminating knowledge, uh, I think that it's very good that we're working together w because we seem to have several common goals also. Oh, I think so, and we do actually, we overlap quite often. I mean, we do work with universities, so there is, mm -hmm. we have slightly different roles, but we can, you know, there's an overlap that we can work with. Yeah, and I use Wikipedia quite a lot already. So, uh, <laughs> You're already so hooked. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You thank will you. be with us for the rest of the day and during the indeed. evening also, so you can pester her then. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. A warm round of applause thank again, you. I think. Thank you.